Oh, Skyrim modding is yeah. great. Have you ever seen the Macho Man Randy Savage? No, <laughs> you... no I want it's to. No. <laughs> yeah, just look it up. Alright everyone and welcome yet to another edition of Game Wild. How about that? What a week. 39. What a month. 39. 39. 39. 39. 39. 39. 39. We are into October, which means Halloween month. If you guys are on uh YouTube, you can see my cool uh stay puffed Gozer's Gym. Oh, I didn't even see that. What, or, wait. Yeah. Oh my god, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a yeah, from, shirt. from Ghostbusters. Yeah. Well, it's it's new school meets old school, right? Because it's uh it's all about staying puffed. <laughs> so there we oh, go. Wait, is that what you told me on the phone the other day? Yeah, I said stay. Okay, puffed. I was wondering why you said that. It's all it's all starting to click now. Okay. It's all coming together <laughs> now. So happy uh, happy Halloween is coming, guys. I uh, um, hope you all have a safe one. We'll obviously be recording more episodes, so as Halloween becomes closer. Uh, we can talk about candy and all that fun stuff. But for now, we talk about the sagas that happen to be Xbox, PlayStation, all that fun stuff. But once again, I get a little ahead of myself. It's time to let everyone know that they should be giving us a five-star rating. <laughs> they should be subscribing to our podcast and wherever it, they're uh, getting time. their podcast. <laughs> they should be ringing that bell on YouTube so they can always get the notifications when our uh, YouTube videos drop, all that great stuff. So make sure you're doing that, guys. And now that I've gotten my intro all out of the way, it's time for the question of the week. Now, the question of the week actually has some value this week. It is, what games do you play outside of video games? This could be board games. This could be LARPing. This could be all different types Did of Did you say games. LARPing? That counts? Yes. All right. Well, it's a game, all right? right? I, I mean, I, I guess we'll go with LARPing right. counts. <laughs> but it's not mine. So I'll... <laughs> yeah, I don't LARP either. So that's, that's just me. So <laughs> lightning bolt. No. Um... <laughs> But I, I bring this up because uh, I am going to be working with SJW and other members of the Game Wild family on Facebook to try and do a weekly fantasy football cast on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live and stuff like that. So, you know, fantasy football is actually a big game that I play. I do a lot of daily stuff. We currently are in a... Um, fantasy football league together you beat me last week hey i'm three and oh i'm number one in the league let's go you are i'm right behind you um and i think i only have like 20 points less scored than you too so i'm keeping up with you it's not it's uh, not this fake is, news this that is the I'm excuses. only 20 points behind you still <laughs> lost i did lose and in the other league where i have five out of the nine players that you have also but we drafted first so yeah that feels bad in my fact you're the one who drafted my players um i i crushed it and i'm three and zero in that league facing the only other three and zero team but yeah fantasy football has been in my blood since fantasy since i found out about fantasy football back in you know the late 90s or early 2000s and then now with daily it brings even more fun to it so um i'm we're gonna try to do something uh on sundays live around 12 o'clock uh, where everything's coming together for about half hour. I want to shoot out and give you guys a daily lineup that I'm going to be playing on FanDuel and DraftKings. So we're going to be starting that on Sundays. I've never really gotten try- into DraftKings. I've always thought about it, but just never. That's that's the it's real a- money one, right? Both of them are yeah, real money. Okay, FanDuel yeah. or it's all fun. And it's it's so much fun, guys. So we're going to try to do that on Sundays. So look forward to that. Uh, we might actually have one that would appear before this podcast because I'm going to try to do one on Sunday, October 4th, especially with all the news about the Patriots and Chiefs and all that fun oh, stuff. Don't happening. remind so, me. Rip yeah. cam. Rip cam. Ramp, ramp. But yeah, so fantasy sports, really, but mostly football is a game that I play outside Man, of video games. I, I, So I like this because it's getting me to think because I'm like, because really, fantasy is the first thing that comes to my mind. Yep. But I can't, like, I I guess ice hockey. Like, I 
I like playing ice hockey when possible, but I haven't been able to play in a while, especially because I need new pads. Yeah. I'm a goalie. But um, okay. I can't really – outside of, like, sports or fantasy sports, I can't really think of what would I, – I, I just – I don't know. I, it's just fantasy sports because I don't LARP. I don't like do. Oh, okay, technically I did Dungeons and Dragons. I did do Dungeons yeah. and Dragons uh, a few times, but not not often. Because Dungeons and Dragons is hard too. You need like you need like a whole group of people to really play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I mean it doesn't have to be something. That, I mean I'm thinking more now than stuff before. You know that you're doing now than mm-hmm. like stuff you've done in the past. So I'd be like, yeah, I used to play board games and stuff too. So. I mean, it's all that stuff. But, yeah, we do do things other than video games, and that's what we're doing. Right now, outside. anyways, fantasy. But, like, that's right only – it's only for the first part of the year, too, right? It's only – well, I should say the end of the year for football. Um, yeah. That's really the only time I play fantasy. I did baseball a lot a while back, but I don't know. Yeah. I just – baseball and basketball, I just I, – I only did basketball once. Um, yeah, I used to do all of them myself, too, but, yeah, I stopped. And they all, they all ended up falling off, yeah. so – but – and I see you have a you have a big puppy behind you there. Yes, I, I, have a, I have a guest. I'm going I'm to actually make sure he doesn't get back. While SJW is kicking out his dog, we're going to go into the next topic. It is Diablo 4. Yes, Diablo 4 has been announced with some new stuff. Yes, so the tree, the skill tree is a real tree. Uh, okay through so i there's only one more game that i'm more excited for well not more excited but almost as excited as diablo 4 and we're gonna actually mention it a little bit later um okay so spoiler alert but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna right. tell anybody yet <laughs> but um yeah oh my god diablo 4 like so actually wait we played diablo together before right didn't we yes diablo yeah, 3 so, we've been playing together before yes and i lo- especially the first like when we okay we need to both get this when it releases first off which of obviously might be not be for like two years but 100 but we need to play the first playthrough together because that's like that's the best one right is like when right. you just do you it's the first time you're doing the story because the whole point of diablo is then you butcher the story five million kajillion times more just to you know, just to level up and get new gear and stuff. So then you just know like every every single aspect of the story by heart. Uh, and that first time is always a big one. But Diablo 4, I'm so excited for it. This is, man, people weren't even sure if Blizzard was going to make a Diablo 4. That was the whole big deal at first was, is this even going to be a thing? Are you surprised that yeah. they're actually making it? No, absolutely not. It's a money maker. It's ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. You well, know yeah, what I mean? I, mean, I think the reason why people were worried was because they were coming out with – they. They announced a mobile game first before they announced Diablo 4. So mm-hmm. people were really worried they were going to focus on this mobile game. But I think all the backlash about there not being a Diablo 4 and there being a mobile game that was kind of a rip of another game, mm-hmm. basically, I think that made them kind of turn it around because I haven't heard much about Diablo Mobile. I've actually heard more about Diablo 4 lately yeah. than I've heard about the Diablo Mobile game, which just goes to show you that they're really putting forth the effort to really make sure that Diablo four is exactly as awesome as Diablo three was. I'm, I've always been one of those guys and I know I have a friend Bevan that, um, always gives me shit for this too, because he's like, you know, there's, there's good mobile games out there. Like you're not really a gamer if you don't give mobile games a chance. And I do like mobile. Like I play Terra on mobile. I think car games are great for mobile. Um, yeah. I play, Actually, there was a new Final Fantasy Brave Exvius that came out, which is a tactical yep. RPG, like Final Fantasy Tactics. That's Tacticals also, are good. Yeah, that's also very good on mobile. But when you have stuff like Diablo or now even Riot is releasing a League of Legends mobile, I can't – or like shooters, I don't understand how people play Fortnite on mobile. Like I want to kill myself when I see somebody trying to like – trying to like move the joysticks on the screen. Right. Like that to me is like not good. So um, yeah, I, I think – it stands the reason why we're not seeing anything about the Diablo three mobile. Um, and I, I really hope, I don't know. <laughs> I really hope their focus is on Diablo four. It seems like it is now. It, it seems is like they're really, it is. especially releasing something like the skill tree and trying to be very, um, uh, communicative of the development process and what's happening and what they're changing from Diablo three. And I, a couple speaking of changes, uh, in the, you saw the, um, the movie clip, right. Or the little, uh, demo that they showed of it. So they spoiled. So this, this is a spoiler alert. They spoiled that it looks like anyways, because it's not confirmed. The Druid is back in action in Diablo 4. And I am 
super excited for that because obviously with Diablo, there's very limited classes in comparison to something like, yeah. you know, World of Warcraft. So what you what you get is what you get usually, and then they'll have like an expansion with one or two more classes. So to see Druid back in, we didn't have that at all in um, in Diablo three. So it's gonna be pretty cool to to see that. And uh, unfortunately, though, I don't think we're gonna hear more until BlizzCon because of coronavirus online twenty twenty one. Says the article yeah. that we found, which is kind of unfortunate as well, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very excited for Drew. Oh, actually, so never mind. It, it is confirmed because now I'm looking at the picture and it actually says Druid in the game with play because the, the last thing I remember is just seeing the video and just seeing like the actual picture of the guy as, as a Druid, like in the video clip. Um, yeah, so I, I, uh, I'm thinking back now. I don't know if that's too much of a spoiler alert because I believe when they really when they announced that they Druid was one of the ones that they were talking about as being in the game. So I don't know if that's too much of a spoiler. Um, uh oh. <laughs> to be honest, with you, sorry to break that to you, but I believe he was there um, because I thought it was cool because he could change into animals and stuff like that. I remember that. And so, so here's here's my question to you though about diablo and mm -hmm. i don't know if you oh wait actually no we played this i think too uh path of exile <laughs> we've played it not together okay all right we didn't play it together all right i thought I, I, recall. Thought, I thought you were the person that i had played for just like a little bit with but i guess not um because i haven't played it much but Me i have either. played it and i have a lot of friends that play it and a yep. lot of a lot of friends that are not only um diablo 3 well i don't want to say fans but they haven't only just played all the diablos uh but they're also avid gamers like they're they're gamers they're not just like fly by night i play some video games they're gamers and they it's pretty universal from what i've seen online and from what they say and even from what i've seen with the game it's a better version of diablo and the story might not be as gripping because diablo is diablo and we all know diablo story is is you know half the reason why you buy the game but it's like consistent updates. There's patches all the time that are balance updates and there's PVP and there's like all this stuff. Just it, it, they actually care about the game. It seems like, like I always mentioned riot is a good company for that, where they're constantly updating league and Runeterra and stuff like that. Um, Blizzard has notoriously like they ignored Hearthstone for a while and they usually tend to ignore Diablo after its release, unless there's expansion coming out. So I, I feel like if they go the same route for Diablo 4, it might not do as well as Diablo 3 did because of Path of Exile. I think people are going to be like, why should we buy this if Path of Exile is continuing to get updates and continuing to get expansions and this company actually gives a shit about balancing the game and, and making cool updates and adding cool stuff to it? Yeah, and that it's free, right? And that's the other big Oh, thing yeah, and it's free. <laughs> like, what the... The game is better from what most people say, and it's freaking free. You don't even have to spend a dime on it. Like... That blows my mind. It's it's oh, that that kills me sometimes at these companies. And that's that's why I'm really starting to dislike Blizzard. I'm really starting mm. to dislike Blizzard. And and I love Diablo. I love Hearthstone. I love uh you know our World of Warcraft. You know, I, I love StarCraft. I Warcraft. Like literally every game they made I grew up with and I still love them and I will play them to date and I will buy them to date. But when I think of Blizzard as a company, I think think of a company that i just absolutely want nothing to do with like hearthstone now comparing it to legends of runeterra riot with runeterra made it much more free to play you know this as well like you just said path of exile is free in comparison to diablo 3 um you know you could argue maybe they're a little bit of a different game but i don't know it's it's just it's uh blizzard not on my good side i guess you could say as of late so very curious you, to see what happens but with it, the release but it but speaking of free to play games, ah, I was you, I was gonna say that you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I listen. You and I both know that I'm the segue guy. Okay, <laughs> be anything about segueing the different topics. <laughs> All right, so then I that was just a setup. Then I'm the setup guy. You're the segue guy. Sure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, but for that being said you did find this so why don't you introduce this uh free to play game that apparently is taking the uh gaming world by storm yeah i um i'm actually surprised you didn't hear anything about it because if you are online you know and, and uh well you don't use twitter a lot right 
No, I don't use Twitter. I get updates on certain things for Twitter, including like when games are going to go on sale, stuff like that. And um, but not like actively and, using it and fan and fantasy football stuff. But yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually I used to never use Twitter like ever, and then I started getting into casting and, and Runeterra and gaming like hardcore again. Excuse me, and I realized that the gaming world like is Twitter. <laughs> like it's Twitter is politics and gaming. That's it. There's, there's like nothing else that's being used for. So if you load up Twitter, there is tons of tweets about this game. So I'm like, what the heck is Genshin Impact? I even actually, actually, I first saw it on Facebook. And then because I kept seeing it on Twitter, I had to check it out. My friend Bevan, again, um, posted a picture, a screenshot of him. And it was a character, like an anime looking character with a sword. And I'm like, oh, all right, this looks like a tactical RPG that, you know, he usually plays a lot of tactical RPG stuff. So I figured I'd check it out. Maybe it's tactical. And lo and behold, I pull it up online and it literally is Legends of, or wow, I almost said Legends of Terror. Legends of, or sorry, Legend of Zelda. There's too many legends going on, right? The Legend of Zelda is the legend we're talking about today. Um, it's basically Breath of the Wild, but just refaced. It's more anime-esque, right? The graphics, the design, and it's free. It's a hundred percent free. And, and when I, I, I've really only played this game for maybe like a half hour at this point, but I loaded it up. I did the intro. I went through the menu system to see kind of, you know, how it flows, how it plays. This game is a full fleshed, like you pull up the map. There's probably at least 50 different like markers that towns and cities that you could go to. There's it's, it's open world. So there's all this stuff laying on the map that you could pick up for items similar to like Witcher, you know, has that Witcher feeling where there's like an item for everything that every plant you can pick up on the ground essentially. So, um, and the, the menu system, there's, there's layers to customizing your character. You can upgrade your items. You can upgrade your character. You can upgrade your character skills individually. So there's a lot of depth to the character development system as well. And this game surprised me for it being free. It's hundred percent free. And it literally is from the looks of it. It could compete with legends of Zelda. Did you play breath of the wild? I did not know. What is wrong with you, Joe? I just don't have time. What is my wrong time is with so you? limited lately. Oh, I haven't. I, know. I haven't. Oh. I haven't beat it. I haven't beat it. Um, I do still need to beat it. But like, all right, think about all that time you invested in Animal Crossing. Wouldn't you have mm. much rather? Would you much rather like to say that you beat Breath of the Wild than say that you invested thirty hours in Animal Crossing? Like, come on. Yeah, it depends on what I got out with Animal Crossing. I, some people might be impressed with what I have in Animal Crossing. I don't know. Do you have like a golden Anyone city can now? Beat. <laughs> Anyone can beat Breath of the Wild, but how many people can say they have a mecha robot or something like that? You know what I mean? From Animal Crossing? Not many. It's like my – I went um, to I went to Kevin's island, uh, the Kevin I think you, you met, and uh, he had a giant Godzilla on his island. This was like when the yeah, game yeah, first came out. I'm like, this game yeah. came out a week ago. How do you have Godzilla on your island? Like what is right. this, dude? <laughs> But yeah, um, I so anybody listening, what, anybody watching, what platforms get this game, all of them, and it's and it's cross platform. Okay, so you're saying play. that you could go to the Xbox Store and download it on Xbox Live. Yep. You could go to and mobile. Is it mobile? Uh, mobile? I ooh, good question. I don't think it's mobile. Oh okay, wait, okay, so it's yes, no, I think it is. There you go. Yeah, Guys, wow. Go for it. Go for it. Free game that's like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and uh, right now, anyways, it's it's a Chinese based game. Um, this so is going like, to get banned next week. I so yeah, get it now. possibly so get, so it, get now. it now. Yeah, it's um, it's apparently like I I forget I don't have the article up right now, but it's one of the top selling, if not the top selling, um, Chinese games like from launch. So it's yeah. it's everybody's very impressed with. Uh, apparently, there was there was people like saying. That it was so like Breath of the Wild, they were like petitioning to like get the game taken down or something. Like I hate, I don't understand why people even do that in the first place. So see, I had a dog, and now you have a daughter. So. <laughs> yeah, right. So we both, we Everybody, both have uh, we have some special yeah. guests on the uh, on the we podcast. We both have special today. guests today. Yes, exactly. And she's got a frozen balloon, so that's no, that's gonna be great. No, <laughs> Who doesn't like frozen though? Who doesn't like Fro even I'm a grown man and I love Frozen. That was an amazing Absolutely. movie. <laughs> we have all that stuff going on. So we're going to get we're going to get her moved out while I am taking care of the little one. Why don't you open up the next topic about what's happening with Switch hacks? Oh yeah, I found this. This was random, huh? Um so okay. 
it's 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 really not just about switch hacks it's really about the comparison between emulators and switch hacks um i guess there was this group and the name of the group was executor which first off when i hear executor i think executor of like pokemon so there's that uh but then there's also the guy all right the guy's name in this group is Gary Bowser. The guy's name is legitimately Gary Bowser. So this guy is basically hacking Nintendo so that you can get, you know, free emulated games and stuff on your Switch, uh, but is also making money off of them at the same time. And I guess that's kind of where a lot of the people had the problem is because I've, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, Joe, but obviously you've, you've used emulators before, right? I have yes. Okay, cool. On on your computer, I imagine, or on a console. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. No. Uh. No. Definitely on a computer. So much easier to deal with. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think Sonic was actually one of the first games I I had on an emulator. But, um. Anyways, basically, this guy on Team Executor, is, is making those, but he's making the emulators and somehow getting money off of them, whether it be through like multiple businesses or whatever. And that's that's the issue, right? Because you have plenty of people that have emulators for free but they're free and nobody really cares about that. It's, it's the fact that he's trying to make money off of them. Um, and the fact that his name is Gary Bowser, can we just can we, like the name of the, <laughs> the name of the article, like this is such a good clickbait article name. Yeah. Right, Bowser exactly. arrested and charged for selling Nintendo switch. Apps. like, yeah, obviously I mean, you're going to click that. <laughs> especially if the, especially if the artwork is actual Bowser, Bowser. and handcuffed or something, <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, you know what? That just goes to show you don't don't do that. <laughs> don't try to make a profit off of other people's work. Um, if you do it for free, I guess it's okay. But if you try to do it, well, to, to make a pro and making profit by selling stuff, you know, it's it's one thing to give something away to try to help people out. It's another thing to try to make money. You well, know? here's one of the things I wanted, to, and this is why I kind of like this article a little bit joe uh, and wanted to bring it up to you was what do you think i mean our because we've had a lot of discussions about the whole cloud gaming thing now yep. like with you know discs maybe going by the wayside etc um what are what are your thoughts on emulators in that whole mix like is like i feel like the gaming companies and the people that actually make this intellectual property they're the ones that lose out when emulators are a thing because they're just going to basically when an emulator for a game comes out, you, you stop all sales like or not, not all because still some people are going to buy it, but you just give an outlet for everybody to access your game for free. And especially when it's something, you know, if there's like a cloud based emulator that comes out, if there's not already, I just haven't used emulators in a while. Um, I feel like that could hurt the gaming community as a whole. And I feel like game developers and game companies might push back and be like, you know what? We're not going to allow free emulators even ever again. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to work out because I can tell you something that of when I did emulation, it was like older games that were hard to find. You couldn't get any more. I never really emulated like new games that were hot and that you could play like, I don't think I'm going to be downloading an Xbox Series X emulator anytime soon or a PlayStation 5 emulator. And most of the time, you can't even get those types of things right away anyways because building out the architecture to emulate the system is very, very difficult. And mm -hmm. so typically when I was using emulators, it was like getting an NES emulator to play some old games or something like that. So I don't necessarily know how that's going to change obviously cloud gaming could change the game literally because of the fact that if somebody can get the architecture of what's happening with how they're streaming the games and you would literally stream the games but there's the thing right you're spending money to go on servers to stream stuff so that's going to cause massive issues anyways because there's going to the person who's giving this away for free is going to have to pay for that bandwidth and I don't think they're going to be able to afford to do that quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So they won't even be able to host it properly, but who do I know cuz I know that they have um you know all those types of movie outlets to be able to stream movies and stuff for free. So there's obviously some market for it 
to be able to do that, but I don't know how big of a bandwidth issue a video game would be versus trying to stream a movie that was bootlegged off uh, somebody recording it in China or something and you watching it in, on a cam kind of deal. So I don't know if it's going to be big enough for video game companies to put a halt to it. If they're making it for a profit, I think obviously that's going to happen, but I don't see it because I think emulation has always been one of those things where it's been old school games that you're emulating, not really new stuff that's pretty much still in market and still being made. Yeah, and it's usually like 64-bit or lower stuff, you mm-hmm. know, from like N64 and back or something like that. So, And actually, yeah. you mentioned even older... PlayStation 2. Yeah, even something... Yeah, PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1. Definitely PlayStation 1. And mm-hmm. actually, yeah, I think recently PS2 games started getting a lot of emulations as well. So, yep. Um, but you mentioned older games too, and, and so so the first thing that came to my mind when I read this article on emulation is, uh, have you have you played Smash at all? Really, Super Smash? Oh yeah, I have it. Okay. For the uh, for the Switch. Wow, I was gonna say sixty four. I <laughs> I have it for yeah. like all of them. Um, <laughs> Super Nintendo, N sixty four, Switch, GameCube. I think. I don't Switch. think Smash Brothers start. I think Smash Brothers started on, on sixty four, not Super Nintendo. Uh, oh, sorry, I, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say Super Nintendo. Yeah. At sixty four, I don't know. There's too many Nintendo consoles that it was on, but basically, I have all of them. And um, Project M, have you ever heard of that? Sounds familiar. So my, I had two friends that were over at my house all the time when I was living with uh, two roommates in North Kingstown. And they were super good at Super Smash Brothers. Like, I mean, they were, they knew how to wave dash like over and over and over again. And you could just like not beat them. Like, no way. They, they could probably have gotten pro. And th- so Project M was Super Smash Brothers ma- uh, Brawl, sorry, for the Wii. And it's a mod of that game. And it was highly regarded as like the better version of the game. Because all it really was, it was the same game. But what they did is they basically took Riot Games' methodology of like balancing League of Legends champions and put it into Super Smash. Because obviously Super Smash is not something that gets patched with like a ton of updates to the characters all the time. Right. Um, although I think it does more so nowadays. Back then it wasn't really. So basically what people were doing was they were modifying all the like how much power each move does from every champion and stuff. So that everything was more balanced. So you could play every every character in the game and, and they were actually balanced. So w- the unfortunate thing was that, and I don't know if it was because it was a mod of it that they didn't really want to use it competitively, but it was never really recognized officially as like the competitive way to play there were project m tournaments but they weren't really recognized by nintendo or anything like if you went to um whatchamacallit in japan evo they there's it's nothing's based on yeah. project m everything yeah, was you know the original game so no, I, th- I think when you're when you go into that route it has to be kind of the official thing modding it causes too much well it's without- almost like I, do you feel like Nintendo doesn't want to support it because they're like, in a way, supporting like hacking their game? Like they just don't want to show people that hey, we're okay with this. Like, I mean, honestly, they should have just bought it. What, they should have just Nintendo. Took, yeah, Nintendo should have just bought it in and brought it into the thing, just kind of like people who uh, modded. Yeah. Like back in the day when people uh, were modding arcade games and stuff like that, they what happened was is that one of the companies brought him in to start doing work mm-hmm. for him because of that so i think <clears throat> what they should have done is grab the talent mm-hmm. and those people should have worked on if they didn't i don't know maybe they did maybe they worked on uh super smash brothers well it's Ultimate. like skyrim right like i've never gotten into that but i know some people that have gone crazy modding skyrim oh skyrim modding is yeah. great. have you ever seen the macho man <laughs> 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 Are you? no i want to though <laughs> yeah just look it up <laughs> That's it is amazing. Like the, it is the greatest thing. But I feel like uh, Bethesda, Rip Bethesda, now owned by right. Microsoft, which we just went over last Microsoft week. Microsoft Company. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know, we know. So, um, you know, I like Bethesda has always seemed to kind of support that. Like they were, they didn't they make patch updates? And I'm not, I'm not like a huge Skyrim or Oblivion player, so I don't, I don't yeah. know this for sure. But sure. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure they made patch updates supporting mods, right? Like, don't they, they might have actively yeah them? and i think they were um i can't remember if it was them or if it was no it was definitely them i just don't remember if it was fallout or skyrim but they were one of the first to allow mods on a console really so you could yeah 
you I, I know for Fallout 4 you could actually mod the game you could there was a place you could go to mod and get mods for the game on the Xbox for Fallout 4 oh wow okay yeah wow. so I could like you could get like a Batman mod and look like uh, Batman and stuff like that they had all different ah. types of mods but the and, and it was legit because what would happen is if you did turn modding on you your achievements got shut off oh, so you couldn't okay. get achievements mm -hmm. so you couldn't cheat um, but if you just wanted to have fun and screw around with it you could turn mods on and then just do whatever yeah be batman and fallout i was just gonna say could so, you be like did they make a spider-man one i never looked to be honest with you because i felt like fallout was more of a batman situation because you were you really didn't have superpowers so i don't I felt know like you using gadgets and guns and weapons and oh, stuff like that's that a good point. So yeah batman felt a little bit more oh plus you had armor and stuff that you could go yep. into stuff like that so I'm just, I asked Spider-Man because, well, obviously you're a huge Spider-Man fan, but I, yep. uh, I, as you know, I did get Spider-Man, uh, finally a little bit yep. late to that, that bandwagon, nice. but, um, I have been playing it and oh my God, I love that game. That is it's great. It's so good. Like it just feels, you could literally not even play the game and just swing around the city. Yeah. It's great. Like I, I actually just great. enjoy swinging from building to building. Like it's insane. Um, imagine VR with that. Like, just just imagine that. Yeah. Like, that well, they have insane. the Iron Man one, so yeah. Oh, that, almost but, makes me want to play. But it. hey, guys, speaking of Spider Man, let's get into our next topic, which is going to be about our updates on the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X, because there are two things that we wanted to talk about. One actually involves Spider Man because it's kind of disappointing, and that is mm -hmm. that PlayStation Five will not have backwards compatibility with saves. Mm -hmm. on your playstation 4 what does this mean people it means that games that you've played on the playstation 4 that you can play on your playstation 5 you have to start all over again and that's disappointing because if you pre-order the miles morales spider-man game you can get the um ultimate edition which includes the spider-man remastered oh yeah by the way you can't upgrade spider-man for free you yeah. have to get the remastered edition which from what i understand you can only get currently if you pre-order the miles morales they may sell it separately but it's disappointing because I would have bought the, that edition if I could move my saves over because, well, I invested a hell of a lot of time into that game, getting the side collectibles and everything like that on top it? of beating it. So why in the world would I just want to start over again, especially with someone who has so much limited time? So Did you 100% Spider-Man? Um, I'm pretty close. I don't. I, you got 100% it, man. You got 100%. Yeah, You're close. not a true Spider-Man fan unless you 100% it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, well, and from reading the article, was it – I'm pretty sure I, – I, correct me if I'm wrong, but did it mention that it was like certain games could, but certain games couldn't? It like was it very was, vague. It was very vague on that, and that's why the article even talks about confusion. it being confusing because yeah. it is a bit confusing. Um, but they, they say there's no standard approach to how this is going to work. Because I, um, I think if I remember, like they mentioned certain games like Wood, and which is, which is like – which I don't understand because then that that leads me to question, okay, is it Sony making the decision or is it the developers that like don't want to add the additional code or something no, into the game? No, it's Sony because, um, once again, the system of the people, Xbox, with their smart delivery system will allow your saves to go from xbox one to xbox series x so all of them we will, know right? that it's possible absolutely yeah so we know it's possible as long as they have the smart delivery service yeah like this uh, this says dirt fives that no this is for the the ps5 um the article that we found on ign dirt fives developers uh confirm yeah. that while playgrounds creations can be migrated other game progress like career mode and currency cannot be moved from ps4 to ps5 so it says Codemasters does leave that door open to that changing, however, so it's possible this issue could be resolved. And lastly, Maneater will let players upgrade to the PS5 version for free, but will not let them carry over saves, trophies, and stats, whereas they will be able to on Xbox. So, like, just those two sentences alone is, like, one game is doing one thing, but they might be able to change it. Another game is doing another thing. They might change it. So, I don't, I don't know. Like, is Codemasters who makes uh, Dirt? Is that who they're know. referring to there? Maybe. Who developed But, Dirt I mean, Fox? at the end of the day... Codemasters. No confusion, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no confusion on Xbox, though, okay? 
it, this is what what my point is about the situation which is it, it makes it even more confusing sony get your act together yeah I okay don't... Let people be able to play their games on... They're going to invest in your system and have invested in other systems. If you're going to allow them to, to play older games on your system, at least the, the, the one before it, you should be able to move the, the saves over. And Xbox is proving right now that it isn't a problem. So, yeah, what's and, the deal, Sony? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't see any... So, here's, here's my thought. And this is the only conceivable reason. So, okay. Actually, there's two reasons. I guess technically the first reason is there's some sort of code or just roadblock that developers and publishers can't deal with from the PS4 save to the PS5 save without however the architecture is built. I highly, highly doubt that that's it. Like, I feel like there's probably a way to just get it to work. Um, you know, I'm not a programmer by any means, so I couldn't tell you for sure, but I'm sure they got, I'm sure they got smart people over there that can figure that out. Yeah, but you also look, the architectures are pretty similar between the Xbox. Oh yeah, and the exactly. Five. So as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't they should know be able what to. the hell yeah. it is, but it, it, it should well, be done and it's not. So. so here's my thought then. So then the second one is, and this is probably why certain i think it is up to the discrepancy of the developers and or sony depending on however whatever contract is worked out with revenue share and i say that because then it's going to be okay if we don't allow the saves to transfer to ps5 do we make more money reselling the game in the ps5 version you know what i mean yeah. or like i i don't think so overall but i, I gotta think that maybe there was some sort of decision made based on them selling more or selling less games whether or not the save oh, day you're gonna was sell over. less because i think they would sell less people, because people would be discouraged if they put out that they mm -hmm. were low on cross saves and then you were going to get charged for it it makes mm -hmm. sense right but i mean even with the xbox stuff if you buy cyberpunk and you play it on the xbox one and then you upgrade to xbox series x cyberpunk upgrades for free saves go over so basically you can enjoy cyberpunk 2077 on xbox uh, xbox one and then get it on series x for free because you bought mm -hmm. it on one boom like not hard people let's just do it let's get it together so and the way that I they're know. phrasing it the way that they're phrasing it too on the website is it's saying it's functionally because it says the key may be in man eaters upgrade description which says this is a separate application slash game on PlayStation 5, which is also what they're kind of implying is the case with Spider-Man. So what that leads me to believe is that the game isn't just like being ported to the PlayStation 5 in the case of Man-Eater or Spider-Man. They're actually redeveloping a new game. And then again, going back to the whole code or programming or whoever's doing the design with the architecture, maybe because they're redesigning the game, there's some yeah, sort of roadblock there. Doesn't, yeah, I don't think so because a save doesn't really deal with a lot of that stuff, to be honest with you, because you're you're dealing I with mean, point in time. You're so dealing says with us, though. So, so says us, the people know, that program. I'm just so thinking I mean, in my head about it. You know what I mean? Logically, so, I agree with you, yeah. Any, po any programmers or developers in games want to come on and talk to us about this, we'll be more than happy to bring you aboard so we can break this confusion and, and find out why Sony can't do it, but Microsoft can. Um, but with that being said, um, you want to slam Microsoft a little bit because you like to do that and it has to come down to the controller. So the next topic about our Xbox PlayStation five riff is the fact that PlayStation has been releasing controllers that have always had rechargeable batteries built in. No problem there. However, the Xbox has always come with two AA batteries and you would have to buy the rechargeable batteries separately. And once again, Microsoft has made a decision, albeit conscious from everything that I can read, that they want to continue this. And you will have to buy a play and charge kit for the Xbox Series X if you want a rechargeable battery. And it will come with a USB-C cable as well because also let us not forget that the new system controllers will be USB-C charging and not USB-A. Yeah. Um, so, it's not USB-B. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I think it's A. I, I could be wrong. I know, it's, it's all USB to me. <laughs> um, so did you see why they said, though? Like, I, I, I can't imagine. I feel like when I'm reading this article, and this is basically reads as like a PR release as to why they're doing this, mm. they're basically saying that 
what it comes down to, this is this is quoted. Okay, so this is from the article, and this is quoted. Um, I don't know who it was that said it, but it was a Microsoft representative. What it comes down to is when actually talking to gamers, oh, it's Jason Ronald. It's kind of polarizing, and there is a strong camp that really wants double A's. So what he's referring to is they're, they're basically, from the looks of it, they they polled people on would you prefer to have double A batteries in your controllers or rechargeable controllers. Um, and then he says, he goes on to say, so just giving flexibility is the way to please both sets of people. You can use a rechargeable battery pack and it works just like it does on the Elite, but it is a separate thing. So... I don't know. What are your thoughts on like what are your thoughts on their reasoning behind what they're doing? I mean, if they did that and they went through the marketing and that's what they found, so be it. You know what I mean? Um, you have to buy some type of charging setup with a PlayStation as well. Now, granted, it comes with a wire, but if you wanted to have something a little bit more you don't hefty, have to buy you get it with Well, that's true. You don't have to, but you know, it, it's if the Xbox Series X comes with the wire, you know, that you can plug in. It's not. You can it's just, it's technically. Just well, we don't know that. We don't know what comes with the system, though. It could come with a wire. even no, though we it do. Comes it doesn't. They don't, it's double A. It doesn't say that it comes with. The, I understand it comes with double A's. But if it does come with a wire, which I don't think it would. But if it did, it would technically match in a sense because you would have the ability to play with no batteries because... With the Xbox right now, if you have no batteries in your controller and you plug it into your Xbox or you plug it into a PC to play a PC game, you actually can, in fact, play it without it. I see you trying to look right now. So basically, for those who don't know, there is... So this is an Xbox One controller. And you can see there... And this is me, mine. So will that in. port power it? I, this, is, this will power it. Yeah. Without... So okay. if you plug it in you'll actually get power to the controller with no batteries. I so, see what you're saying. So now you can see this has no batteries in it. And if I plug it into something, it'll work. So I could see why I, I don't know. I, I like if they made that decision though, to go with double batteries, I imagine. Plus, it was... I mean, honestly, I haven't played hardcore in a long time, so I can't speak to the fact of how good or bad the, the PlayStation controllers battery is. And how long it will last a on a it. charge yeah. or how long will it last? Because once that battery has gone and you can't play with it anymore. I've literally get never, controller. I've literally never. I listen, I'm not saying that yeah. that's the case. I'm just saying that those are the types of pitfalls and, you know, overthinking things that people would be. Actually, when I had the 360, because so one of the things the article mentions too, back in the Xbox 360 days, they actually tried making that switch over to battery packs um it was actually removable battery packs though not like playstation yep. playstation it's all built in and yep. um i don't know they just didn't stick with it when they when they went over to the xbox one so um i don't know it, it it feels like they would have made that decision partly in that they wouldn't have to ship a cable which would save them money not shipping an additional cable um, yeah. but but i could see why they would include it because then it does give you a way to always play with the controller regardless of if you don't have batteries which i right. think they should do like they they should do that so you're not pigeonholed into having to buy the batteries but uh yeah i don't know it, like you said if they actually did the marketing research and 75 percent of people said they prefer double a batteries great but like yeah. i want to see that that marketing research because i i rationally speaking can't see why people would prefer to want to always have to buy batteries and replace batteries, right. especially because I, I like, I know my PlayStation controllers I've never had problems with. And I've, I haven't heard yeah. anything from my friends. I haven't seen anything online where there's like this big problem with how the controllers right. work. Um, so I just can't, I don't know. I just can't believe that without actually seeing the marketing research. So I, it's a little disappointing that they still decided to go with the batteries, but I don't overall think it's going to be too big of an impact. I think it might impact system sales a bit if people do care about having to spend the 25 extra dollars on the power pack. But I don't think Listen, people are going to look into that too much. No, I, to, to be honest with you, if that were the case, we wouldn't be in the, pro the case we are now where all the pre-orders are gone and yeah, no one knows yeah. if they're going to get one on day one now. Yes. So well, are they all gone? Bring that up to are, the... are they all gone, or are they just Xbox One S's? Or sorry, no one, one, Xbox one X, one X. Yeah, or one S, yeah. <laughs> well, going on to brighter and better things. It's time.
for Rough House Deals, where we tell you where free stuff is. And typically, it's always on the Epic Game Store because I can't <laughs> find any other free stuff. So, is there really um, not that much other free stuff? Like, I haven't around? been able to find much that's good. You know, at least some of this stuff's interesting. But let's start off with an open beta right now on Epic Game Store. You can go to uh, get an open beta for a game called Rogue Company. Mm -hmm. Gear up for the Rogue Company open beta with tough enough weapon wrap. Claim the wrap for free through the Epic Game Store today. Save the day. Look good. Get paid. Um, I think this is a, like a five on five shooter or something like that. Or it might be just like a kind of like a Fortnite, you know, slash uh players unknown battlegrounds type situation where you're just thrown in and you're just trying to take people out but anyways there's a beta open for it if you want to try it out uh but it's definitely looks like a first or third person shooter with special abilities and guns and all that stuff october 8th you will be able to order these games for free on the epic game store abzu from the art director of journey and flower abzu is a beautiful underwater adventure that invokes the dream of diving. So it's basically like a water diving adventure. And then if you're into guns and all that fun stuff, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, Red Orchestra Series take on Vietnam, 64 players, multiplayer matches, 20 plus maps, U.S. Army and Marines, Australians and other types four of military. Flyable helicopters. Yeah, yeah, there's 50 plus weapons, four flyable helicopters, mines traps and tunnels brutal authentic gritty character customization that is all for you for free if you want a military shooter that is uh not call of duty you know what i want to escape from tarkov yeah, real quick random question mm -hmm. what game can you th think of that you because i i don't really personally like recognize any of those games rule company sounds vaguely familiar but um so what game have you played or downloaded recently that was a game from your childhood, like nostalgic game, that when you re-downloaded it and replayed it was actually really disappointing? You were like, "Wow, this isn't is this isn't what I remembered." Nope, it, it hasn't Nothing happened yet. To you? Not yet, anyway. So that happened to me. Can okay. you guess what game it was? It's it's a game. Legend of Zelda. No, 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 no. That would no, no. I'll still play Link to the Past, and that shit is nostalgic as all hell. I love that, but. Um, no, what, what, uh, it's a game that we've mentioned recently. Oh, probably like Final Fantasy, like eight or something like that. Maybe one no, of those, those are equally, about? equally oh, no. as, almost okay. all the RPG games. I'll, I'll always, I can't think of it off the top of my head. It, it, it's later in the night. So we, uh, <laughs> I know I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> we usually record these early. So roller no. coaster tycoon. Oh, okay. I, all right. I was so excited to load the third one up. I loaded mm -hmm. it up and then the menu screen popped up and I looked at the menu screen and I'm like, wow, I, I actually feel like I'm in Windows 95 right now Thanks. Um, just because of the way that the vibe that the menu gave off. And then I started playing it and the controls and everything to just get to where you needed to go and like increase prices of hamburgers or hot dogs or whatever it was terrible. Yeah. The controls Ugh. were just like. I could not do what I wanted to do as fast as I wanted to do it, and it was really off-putting. Thank God it was free. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess, but I just remember that game being so yeah. amazing when I was younger, and I guess didn't didn't age as, as well, didn't age apparently. Well. So, but um, sure. just wanted to throw that out there. Just wanted to throw that out there, because that, was, that well, was one of the free games that I that I took you up on that, that you had mentioned. Nice. So. Well, why don't we throw out some games that you do have to pay for as we ah. move on to the SJWs and game releases of the week and one of these like i mentioned earlier is actually one of the uh few games that i am just as excited as diablo 4 for so uh first before we do that one is foregone that's coming out for ps4 xbox one and switch on october 5th and uh it's a fast and fluid 2d action platformer packed with legendary loot and stunning pixel art i love pixel art games too collect an arsenal of powerful weapons and upgradable skills then use them to shoot and slash your way through handcrafted pixel environments hiding a treasure trove of uh secrets so it's kind of like a hack and slash but pixel version um so the game that i am super excited about that i didn't realize is coming out already that my grandpa this is actually one of my one of the very first PC games that my grandpa showed me because he played this and loved this game. Baldur's Gate 3. This is Baldur's Gate like started, I'm pretty sure, like the Diablo thing, right? So hold on, hold on. Baldur's Gate 
release date. I want to see what came out first, Baldur's Gate or Diablo. So Baldur's Gate came out December 21st, 1998, and Diablo came out on December, actually 31st, 1996. So Diablo was the first of its kind. Um, but Baldur's Gate plays very much like Diablo and is so good. It's so good. So if you guys like Diablo, if you like that kind of game, definitely pick up Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, it's coming out for PC and Stadia. Stadia getting some support. This is on release. This is on release day. Stadia is getting a game October 6th. Uh, then we have Nickelodeon Kart Racers Grand Prix for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on October 6th. Uh, it's exactly what you think it is. It's basically Mario Kart, but with SpongeBob and Ninja Turtles <laughs> and Rugrats. So uh, then we have Overcrowd, a commute em up October 6th for PC. Uh, design and build the most efficient metro stations known to man. Excavate, expand, set staff priorities, and manage the commuter flow. Overcrowd is a 2.5D managed first time i've heard of that tycoon simulator set below the bustling city of lubden town it's basically roller roller coaster tycoon but a mall is basically what that is speaking of roller coaster tycoon uh then we have blastin for pc vr is october 8th and i actually pulled up the complete oh here it is pulled up the wrong thing at first there's apparently somebody named blastin uh <laughs> on steam which is the profile that i pulled up I'm actually really curious to see what this is. Uh, looks like it is last champion standing in resolution games, fiercely competitive VR dueling game. So you have guns uh, and apparently you duel a, another person within the slow motion bullet hell of blasting. You continuously dodge, <laughs> dodge, duck and dive. Gee, I wonder where they get that from to invade incoming attacks from your opponent in this PVP combat game that combines skill strategy and speed with an incredible arsenal of futuristic high-tech weapons. I think this is one of the first times that a VR game has kind of gone into this territory. Um, so that should be kind of interesting yeah. to see how that does. Dodgeball was a good movie. I like that movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, so we got Game Dev Tycoon, another tycoon, on October 8th for Switch. Uh, the popular game development simulator, which lets you replay gaming history and run your own game development company, is finally on Nintendo Switch optimized for both touchscreen and joy con so this is um i do remember this coming out previously because everybody was like oh my god you can be a game developer it's basically a role playing for being a game developer but it's a lot of task management and time management and stuff like that so uh, then we have mortal Kombat 11 aftermath all hallows eve skin pack joe have you still been playing mortal Kombat? 11? i have not i have not been playing it now unbelievable all that money you spent on it god i know i know <laughs> uh ride four for PC, PS4, and Xbox One comes out on October 8th. Uh, Ride 4 is its motorcycle game. So if uh, you guys haven't played it before, there's four of them. Um, and you race basically street bikes. So, And I think it's 10% off right now as well. Uh, the Uncertain Light at the End on October 8th. Uh, this is a story-driven adventure game set in a post-apocalyptic world. Humanity disappeared from the face of the earth and has been replaced by robots together with emily one of the survivors you will have to witness how people try to live in a world ruled by robots i actually like that storyline a lot so it definitely looks interesting that comes out for pc on the 8th i actually forgot one as well ink and fell pc ps4 xbox one and switch on the 8th uh this is a turn-based tactical rpg about a group of troublesome magic students and it's got like the old 8-bit graphics it looks like or is that 16-bit I don't know how many bits, but it's, it's old. A, they're pretty close. So, <laughs> even 16. so um, and then we have Ben 10 Power Trip based on the cartoon. If you guys don't know what that is, it's a cartoon on, is that Disney or Nickelodeon? It's Nickelodeon, right? Uh, I believe it's Nickelodeon, yeah. Yeah, so uh, just basically playing along as Ben, the Ben 10 squad. Uh, that comes out on October 9th. FIFA 21 comes out on October 9th for everything but the Nintendo Switch. And the survivalists, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on the 9th. A uh, living world full of surprises, secrets, and danger awaits the survival survivalists. An adventure-filled survival sandbox set in the escapist universe. Explore, build, craft, and even train monkeys with up to three friends in a desperate bid to survive. Have you got what it takes to be a survivalist? Train monkeys. Well, if you ever wanted to train monkeys, here's your shot. <laughs> Apparently, the time is now. <laughs> and that is it. It's going to wrap up all the games coming out in the next week or so. 
Fantastic. Well, we've had a, a wonderful, wonderful podcast tonight <laughs> as we try to get some stuff done. So we're going to end it here as we have intruders in my house that I have to deal with, <laughs> mainly my little one. It happens. We have um, life, real life. <laughs> yes, yes, real life happens, and uh, babysitters uh, need to leave and things like that. So... With that being said, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us this week on Game Wild, and we will catch you next week. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page and group, and like I said, I'm going to try to do some fantasy football stuff on Sundays. We might rotate guests with SJW's busy, busy schedule as he commentates for uh, Hey, all man. Of- I'm sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> we will see you guys next week on Game Wild. See you guys. Play it, everybody.